Okay guys, it's time to get into the nitty gritty of our changes and the first thing I'm gonna do actually is to rename these roots so they will look more like a proper API so we'll have the slash API slash events okay and that's our first one and then we'll have slash API slash events slash new we have slash api slash events slash delete. We'll change that one later. And that's gonna be it. We're also going to add a new api events slash update for the run. So let's start to refactor our had event service. So what we want to do is to actually post the request to the api slash events slash new endpoint, okay? So we go back to our event factory. At the minute, our create event is just using an internal array, which I've removed. And we can get rid of all of that. Okay. And this will be just return dollar HTTP dot post this time. And we're going to pass in the event. We're going also to invoke the API slash events slash new. Okay. So the way that our uh, HTTP backend is set, as Stefan has showed you, is that we have an error counter that is used to randomize a 404 error. So whenever we keep trying adding an event, at some stage we'll, we'll retrieve an error, which is what we want. So after we call the $HTTP post at this specific endpoint, we pass in the event, we get back a promise. Sorry, actually we should type post in lowercase, just as per the get. And I've noticed as well that they've added an extra slash on the on line 92 in my upper RAM mock.js. Sorry about that. The last thing we have to do is just refactor our get all events to call the new API URL. So it will be API slash events. And that's done. We can go back to our controller now. And we just need to refactor in our submit form function, the event factory create event call. So that we will deal with the promise being returned from our $HTTP post. So we're going to add a then function. The first parameter will be a function and also the second one. The first one will deal with the success. And so we'll have our data payload and we're just going to show the alert inside the body, okay? And the second function will deal with the errors. So we'll have an error element. And we're going to create another alert that will say an error Occurred. I'm going to show what the actual error is. Okay. And that's it. So if I format this code a little bit, we are ready to see what happens in our application, right? So let's try to create an event. I put random names, so we'll call it like a great concert, the best event in my life. 2015-0101, the location is wherever, and the price is $2,000, right? So I submit that, my event has been added successfully, so I have my alert, my promise was returned and is fulfilled. And if I check my manage events, I can see the great concert, okay? So the event has been added, then what do you notice? We have a new ID. That's great, isn't it? And our price is 2,000 euro. And thanks to the currency filter that we've added in our ngrepeat, repeat, the price is properly formatted with commas, okay? And dots for the decimals. Let's try to add another event. So great concert two, blah, blah. The date will be 2015 01 location blah. <laughs> Sorry about the creativity. And the price will be 100 euro this time. So we can submit this event and it's been added successfully. This is the second time and I'm sure that if I submit a third time, we might get back an error. 
So let's keep the data like it is. We don't care if we have a duplicate right now. So let's submit again, and we have an error that occurred. You see that the error being displayed is saying an error occurred object object. And the reason why is because we have an object being returned in case we have an error. So we need to access that object and grab the message, right? To define our message, we can use a special property in our mock. And when we are returning an error, we can add an extra parameters that defines the so-called status text. So our status text will be crazy error, okay? And so in our controller, instead of concatenating the error object, we're going to concatenate the status text, okay? So that will be status text, right? So let's see if now it works. We're back on our page. I've already submitted two events, so I'm going to submit once again to make sure that we get the proper error message. And now we have an error called crazy error, and that's fixed. So remember that you can use the status text property to set up a specific message you want to return in your error. But you can also return a payload if you want. If you want to have something more specific or with multiple sets of data, you can use the second parameter that it's an object that contains your payload. And that will be accessible inside the data object. So you have error.data dot whatever is the property that you have defined. All right. So in the next lesson, we'll see how to create an update function. And to do so, we're going to implement a few changes both to the mock itself, to our controller, and to our template. And that's what we're going to do next.